Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Saira Mochtaba with the Midday News. The headlines. Maharashtra continues to report highest daily COVID cases. Six states continue to report a surge in new cases. All schools from class 8 to 1 to 8 closed in Uttar Pradesh from 24th to 31st of March amidst rising COVID cases. Schools and colleges in Chandigarh to remain closed till 31st of March. Supreme Court refuses to extend six-month loan moratorium period offered by the Reserve Bank of India. Says complete waiver of interest during the moratorium could not be granted. Lok Sabha takes up Finance Bill 2021 for consideration and passage. Filing of nominations for fourth phase of assembly elections in West Bengal to end this evening. Notification for fifth phase to be issued today. Election Commission team arrives in Siliguri to review poll preparedness for the upcoming assembly elections in West Bengal. BJP releases manifesto for upcoming assembly elections in Assam. Promises to make state free from floods. In Madhya Pradesh, 13 people, including 12 women, die in an auto and bus collision in Gwalior. Meeting of Permanent Indus Commission between India and Pakistan underway in New Delhi. Germany extends lockdown till 18th of April to break the third wave of COVID-19. And in cricket, in the first ODI against India, England wins the toss and elects to field. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain the Ugas Ki Duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now, the news in detail. Maharashtra, Punjab, Karnataka, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh and Tamil Nadu are reporting a surge in daily new cases. These six states together account for 80.90% of the new cases reported in the last 24 hours. Maharashtra continues to report the highest daily new cases at 24,645. It is followed by Punjab with 2,299, while Gujarat reported 1,640 new cases. The Health Ministry said 10 states are displaying an upward trajectory in daily new cases. These are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka, Haryana and Rajasthan. A total number of 40,715 new COVID cases have been reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the cumulative positive cases to over 1 crore 16 lakh. The Health Ministry said 199 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours, taking the toll to over 1,60,000 across the country. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is over 3,45,000, which comprises only 2.96% of the total positive cases. The country's COVID-19 recovery rate is at 95.67%, with a total recovery of more than 29,000 patients in the last 24 hours. The ministry said over 1 crore 11 lakh patients have already recovered from the disease. The ministry added that over 4 crore 84 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered to the beneficiaries in the country so far. The Union Health Ministry said that more than 32 lakh 53,000 doses were given to the beneficiaries in the last 24 hours. Centre has written to states and union territories to increase the interval between two doses of COVID shield to four to eight weeks based on the recommendations of the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, NTAGI, and National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19, NEGVAC. This decision of revised time interval between the two doses is applicable only to COVID shield and not to Covaxin vaccine. In view of the emerging scientific evidence, the interval between two doses of a specific COVID-19 vaccine, that is Covishield, has been revisited by NTAGI and subsequently by NEGVSC in its 20th meeting. During this meeting, the recommendation has been revised to provide the second dose of Covishield at four to eight weeks interval after the first dose instead of earlier practiced interval of four to six weeks. The Union Health Ministry said 
the government has accepted the recommendations of both the expert groups. Dr. Rakesh Garg from Ames, New Delhi says that the gap of four to eight weeks between the two doses of Covishield will boost its effectiveness. चार से आठ वीक का जो अभी चेंज किया गया जो कि पहले चार से छह वीक था तो उसमें भी जो चेंज किया है वो अभी हमारे पास प्रेजेंट डेटा के हिसाब से है तो उसमें जो एंटीबॉडी रिस्पांस है जो हम बोलते हैं कि वैक्सीन का असर आ गया जिसको आप साइंटिफिक लैंग्वेज में बोले कि बॉडी के अंदर एंटीबॉडी रिस्पॉन्स अच्छे बन गए एंटीबॉडीज बन गए हैं तो वो तकरीबन चार से आठ हफ्ते के बीच में अगर ये सेकेंड डोज दिया जाए तो उसके रिजल्ट बेहतर पाए गए और इसके हिसाब से इसको चेंज किया गया The Uttar Pradesh government has issued fresh guidelines in the wake of growing cases of corona infection in the state. The order issued by Chief Secretary of State R K Tiwari directs all district magistrates, senior police officers and commissioners of the state to take measures to prevent the spread of corona infection. A report As per the new guidelines, children less than 10 years age and senior citizen will not be able to take part in any public function or procession. Government has already issued order that such functions cannot be organized without the prior permission of administration. After getting permission, it will be the responsibility of organizer to ensure a strict following of COVID protocol during the function. All schools except medical and nursing colleges will remain closed from 25th to 31st March in a except those where examinations are going on covid help desk will be revived and dedicated covid hospitals will be activated along with the regular meetings at integrated covid command center to stop the spread of infection further people will be discouraged to gather at public places in large numbers and it will be responsibility of police to ensure this sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has urged the people of the state to remain alert and cautious in view of surge in COVID-19 cases in some parts of the state. The Chief Minister also asked the people not to gather in large numbers to celebrate Holi and maintain social distancing norms. The Chief Minister said people will be able to check the spread of the disease if Holi is not celebrated in large gatherings or at public places. 261,537 patients have recovered from the COVID-19 infection in the state so far. COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 99.20% in Bihar. Currently, only 537 patients are receiving treatment at various hospitals. Only 90 fresh cases were reported during the last 24 hours. No positive case was reported from 15 districts of the state. In Jharkhand State Health Secretary KK Soan has instructed all the deputy commissioners of the districts to make containment and micro containment zones to control the growing spread of COVID-19 infection in the state. The state health department has also directed to start special campaigns for intensifying COVID-19 testing at mass scale. More from our Ranchi correspondent. Principal Health Secretary KK Soan has instructed the deputy commissioners of all 24 districts of the state to carry out special campaigns for covid testing and creation of containment and micro containment zones to check the spread of growing covid-19 infection rate in the state. Instructions for intensive monitoring by creating containment and micro containment zones, contact tracing and quick covid test through rapid antigen test and RT-PCR test has also been given by the health department. Special marking of cluster for asymptomatic patients admitted in covid and non covid hospitals has also been directed by the state health department the health secretary has also instructed to form a rapid response team to check the eligibility of patients for home isolation which will have to be reported within 24 hours shilpi air news ranchi in the union territory of chandigarh schools and colleges have been closed from today till 31st of march The ongoing examinations of classes 9th and 11th in schools have been postponed but online examinations of classes 3rd to 8th in schools and those being conducted by Punjab University will continue as per schedule. All eating places, restaurants, hotels including food joints in various malls will run with 50% capacity and will close by 11 pm. The state museums, libraries, auditoriums, theaters etc run by Chandigarh administration will remain closed till further orders. The permission from Deputy Commissioner Chandigarh will be mandatory for holding any event. The number of guests will be restricted by the Deputy Commissioner. The hosts in various events will ensure that all participants wear masks wherever necessary. They must distribute masks to the participants. अश्विनी कुमार शर्मा एआईआर न्यूज चंडीगढ़ इन छत्तीसगढ़ कोविड केसेस आर स्टेडीली इंक्रीजिंग 
Meanwhile, vaccination against COVID is also continuing vigorously in the state. A report from our Raipur correspondent. In Chhattisgarh, more than 1,500 new cases of COVID infection were reported yesterday. With these, the number of corona-infected people in the state has increased to more than 3,25,000. Currently, about 9,000 patients are being treated in various hospitals or in home isolation. Corona vaccination campaign is also going on vigorously in the state. Yesterday, about 65,000 people were vaccinated with the COVID vaccine. Till today, more than 13 lakh doses of vaccine have been inoculated, while almost 54 lakh samples have been tested to identify COVID patients. Meanwhile, the state's culture department has postponed all new cultural programs in view of spread of COVID infection. All government and non-government schools in the state have been closed till further orders. However, all the teachers and other staff will have to come to school regularly. Vikal Shukla, AIR News, Raipur. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said the world has seen the potential of India during the corona time. Speaking at the BJP parliamentary meet, the Prime Minister also informed the BJP MPs that during the last 21 years, as a Chief Minister and then as the Prime Minister, he has not taken a single day off and the work he has done will become history. Informing this to media after the meet, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Arjun Ram Meghwal said, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman gave a presentation on the highlights of the budget. The Parliamentary Affairs Minister said, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar also gave a presentation about India's vaccine diplomacy during this corona time. A total of 15,52,707 cyber security incidents have been observed during the last two years. In a written reply in the Lok Sabha today, Minister of State for Home G. Kishan Reddy said that, more than 3,94,000 cybersecurity incidents have been observed during the year 2019, whereas more than 11,58,000 incidents have been reported last year. He said the government has formulated a cyber crisis management plan for countering cyber attacks. Lok Sabha has taken up the Finance Bill 2021 for consideration and passage. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman moved the bill today in the lower house to give effect to the financial proposals of the central government for the financial year 2021-22. Initiating the discussion, Dr. Amar Singh of Congress said that the finance bill has been introduced at a time when the country is facing a difficult time due to the COVID-19 pandemic. He said the government is trying to put blame on the pandemic for the poor performance of the economy. He said the country's economy is going down since the first quarter of 2018-19. He said revenue collection is witnessing a declining trend and the central government has increased excise duties, cess and surcharges on various items which are affecting the common man. He said that the central government is not releasing the GST compensation to the states which is impacting the implementation of several welfare schemes. Rajendra Garwal of BJP said that the government has taken a series of measures for the welfare of poor people, farmers, workers and soldiers under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He said the country is heading towards becoming self-reliant in every sector due to the steps taken by the government. He said 21 lakh crore rupees package has been given during the COVID-19 pandemic to boost the economy and provide relief to the people. He said the country is performing well in several global parameters and the country's foreign reserve has touched the highest mark. The discussion is underway. Supreme Court today refused to extend the six-month loan moratorium period offered by the Reserve Bank of India and said a complete waiver of interest during the moratorium could not be granted. The Apex Court rejected the pleas from various trade associations and corporate bodies to extend the six-month loan moratorium period offered by the Reserve Bank of India. A bench headed by Justice Ashok Bhushan said the top court cannot do a judicial review of the center's financial policy decision unless it is malified and arbitrary. Last year, on 17th of December, the bench headed by Justice Ashok Bhushan had reserved its verdict on the batch of pleas. The SC said no direction could be issued to the government or the RBI to announce any particular financial package or relief and held that it could not issue directions to provide relief to particular sectors over and above others. 
APEX Court directed that there should be no interest on interest or penal interest on any amount during the loan moratorium from any borrower. Justice Shah observed that the pandemic affected all the sectors and the government had to take measures such as providing transport to migrants. Even government had no support during pandemic and even GST loss that was incurred. The court has considered reliefs independently. Waiver of complete interest is not possible as banks have to pay interest to account holders and pensioners. It may be noted that the Reserve Bank of India had on March the 27th, 2020, announced a moratorium on loan installments due between March 1st and May 31st. The moratorium period was later extended by three months till August 31st, 2020. The moratorium was intended to provide borrowers relief during the COVID-19 pandemic, enabling them to defer payments on EMIs. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Maharashtra continues to report highest daily COVID cases. Six states continue to report a surge in new cases. All schools from classes 1 to 8 closed in Uttar Pradesh from 24th to 31st of March amidst rising COVID cases. Schools and colleges in Chandigarh to remain closed till 31st of March. Supreme Court refuses to extend six-month loan moratorium period offered by the Reserve Bank of India. Says complete waiver of interest during the moratorium could not be granted. Lok Sabha takes our finance bill 2021 for consideration and passage. Filing of nominations for fourth phase of assembly elections in West Bengal to end this evening. Election Commission team arrives in Siliguri to review poll preparedness for the upcoming Assembly elections in West Bengal. BJP releases manifesto for upcoming Assembly elections in Assam, promises to make state free from floods. In Madhya Pradesh, 13 people including 12 women die in an auto and bus collision in Gwalia. Meeting of permanent Indus Commission between India and Pakistan underway in New Delhi. Germany extends lockdown till 18th of April to break the third wave of COVID-19. And in cricket, the first ODI against India, England wins toss and elects to field. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR New Zealand. Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. The BJP National President J.P. Nadda has released the party's Sankalp Patra for Assam, promising to make the state free from floods. Releasing the Sankalp Patra or the manifesto in Guwahati in presence of several leaders, including Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal, the BJP President said that the party would launch Mission Brahmaputra to eliminate all losses to lives, livelihoods and property. The manifesto also promises to bring 30 lakh families under the coverage of Orunodai scheme if it comes to power again. It also assures to increase the monthly amount to 3,000 rupees under Orunodai from the present 830 rupees. The party promises to protect the rights of the people through a corrected National Register of Citizens, NRC. Defence Minister and Senior BJP Leader Rajnath Singh held a rally at Lomding in Assam. Addressing the rally, the Defence Minister assured that the BJP would preserve the identity of Assam. The senior leader said that under the Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal, Assam has made tremendous progress during the last five years. The Congress, AIUDF, Ahamgon Parishad, among others, are also holding rallies in the state. The full team of the Election Commission, led by Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora, has arrived in Siliguri, West Bengal today to review final poll preparedness for the upcoming Assembly elections in the state. According to sources, the ECI team is meeting the Chief Electoral Officer of West Bengal, Aris Aftab. Four special observers appointed by the ECI are also in Siliguri. Later in the afternoon, the team will be holding a meeting with the District Electoral Officers, Nodal Officers, Police Superintendents and Commissioners of North Bengal, 
while officials of South Bengal will be joining the meeting virtually. Filing of nominations for the fourth phase of assembly elections in West Bengal will end today. 44 constituencies spread over five districts will go to polls in this phase on the 10th of April. Notification for the fifth phase of assembly elections was issued today. In Tamar Nadu, campaigning for the 234 assembly seats is gaining momentum in the state. More from our Chennai correspondent. Over 4,100 candidates are in the fray for the 16th assembly election, as per the latest data issued by the Chief Electoral Office. With just a few more days left for the single phase polling, preparations are in full swing by the district authorities. Karur Assembly Constituency has a maximum of 84 contestants, followed by Kangayam with 50 and Aravakuruchi with 40 candidates. The lowest number of six candidates are contesting in Walpara Constituency. For the Kanyakumari Lok Sabha by poll, 13 candidates are in the fray. AADMK Joint Coordinator and Chief Minister Edappadi K. Pani Chami is campaigning in Salem district and DMK leader MK Stalin is campaigning in Krishnagiri Dharmapuri and Salem districts today senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi Congress leader Rahul Gandhi will campaign in the state by the end of this month with joy this is R Murthy AR News Chennai Meeting of Permanent Indus Commission between India and Pakistan is underway in New Delhi the commission deals with water rights on the Indus Wood River the Permanent Indus Commission was set up under the Indus Waters Treaty of 1960 The Indian side is being led by the Indian Commissioner for Indus Waters Pradeep Kumar Saxena. The Pakistan side is being led by Syed Muhammad Meher Ali Shah. The Indus Water Treaty warrants the two commissioners to meet at least once a year. Last year's meeting scheduled to be held in March in New Delhi was cancelled in view of the pandemic. The Indus Waters Treaty was signed between the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and former Pakistan President Ayub Khan. It sets out a mechanism for cooperation and information exchange between the two countries regarding their use of the rivers. Pakistan today said it wants to have good relations with its neighbors. Briefing media in New Delhi, Charge de Affaires, Pakistan High Commission Aftab Hasan Khan said it will only be possible with peace. The Gandhi Peace Prize for Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is a befitting tribute to the ever deepening Bangladesh India relations. The Bangladesh government said the Gandhi Peace Prize for Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is in the year when both countries are jointly celebrating the birth centenary of Bangabandhu, Golden Jubilee of Bangladesh's independence and 50 years of diplomatic relations with India. As part of our special series on the 50th anniversary of the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War, we bring you an exclusive interview with Liberation War fighter Lieutenant Colonel retired Sajjad Zaheer. Lieutenant Colonel Kazi Sajjad Ali Zaheer joined the Pakistan Army but upon hearing atrocities committed by the Pakistan Army in Bangladesh he fled the country and reached India speaking to AIR news Lieutenant Colonel Sajjad Zaheer shares the common sacrifice of Indian forces and Mukti Bahini in the 1971 war while escaping from Pakistan i thought and i knew also the indian government indian people are helping us so much indian government is helping in sheltering our refugees maybe millions of them i didn't know the number at that time also helping in training the mukti bahini attending to our sick and wounded attending to the victims of genocide and the common people of india rose to help the bengali population A massive fire swept through the Rohingya refugee camp at Ukia in Cox's Bazar area of Bangladesh on Monday, rendering thousands of people homeless. According to official sources, two people were killed in the incident, though local media reported seven deaths. The massive fire started at the Balukhali camp in Cox's Bazar late on Monday. Witnesses said that barbed fencing around the camp prevented people from escaping the fire, causing casualties. Germany is extending its lockdown until April the 18th and calling on citizens to stay at home for 5 days over Easter holidays to try to curb the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Chancellor Angela Merkel said today in a news conference that the country is now basically in a new pandemic. The British mutation has become dominant with very different characteristics, more deadly and more infectious. Israelis began voting today in a fourth election in 2 years. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is hoping a rapid COVID-19 vaccine rollout will win him another term. Yair Lapid, a former finance minister who heads the centrist Yesh Atid party, has emerged as Netanyahu's main challenger. 
With coronavirus precautions in place at polling booths across the country, opinion polls show the race too close to call. Back home in Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh, 13 people died in an auto and bus collision. These include 12 women and the driver of the auto rickshaw. The accident occurred in Purani Bhavani area of Gwalior. While eight women and the auto driver died on the spot, the others succumbed to their injuries in a hospital. President Ramnath Kovind has expressed his condolence on the deaths of the people. He prayed for the speedy recovery of those injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan expressed condolence to families of those who lost their lives due to accident. State government announced rupees 4 lakh each to the family of the deceased and rupees 50,000 to the injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has approved an ex-ratio of 2 lakh rupees each from Prime Minister's National Relief Fund for the next of the cane of those who have lost their lives due to the Gwalior accident. 50,000 rupees would be given to those seriously injured. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu paid tribute to the fearless freedom fighters Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev on their martyrdom day today. In a series of tweets, the Vice President said their indomitable courage and love for the motherland inspired many to join the freedom movement. On the occasion of Shaheed Divas today, Minister of Information and Broadcasting Prakash Zavrikar paid tributes to Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. In a tweet, the minister said that they gladly sacrificed their lives for the freedom of the country. India was 39 for the loss of 10 wickets in 10 overs a short while ago in the first ODI match against England being played at Pune. Earlier, England won the toss and elected to field. England pacer Joffre Asher will miss the ODI series because of an elbow injury. England has brought in Matt Parkinson into the squad. India has included batsmen Surik Yadav, Pacers Prasid Krishna, Mohammad Siraj and all-rounder Krunal Pandya in its squad. The second and the third match of the series are the same venue on 26th on 28th of March. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. National capital Delhi is seeing a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The maximum temperature is around 33 degrees Celsius. It recorded the minimum of 21 degrees. Mumbai with partly cloudy sky may have a maximum temperature of nearly 34 degrees Celsius after registering a minimum of 22 degrees. Chennai is having a clear sky with the temperature rising up to nearly 34 degrees Celsius, moving from a minimum of 22 degrees. Kolkata with clear sky is expected to record a maximum temperature of around 38 degrees Celsius and a minimum of 26 degrees. Srinagar is seeing a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Jammu is expecting a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain, having a maximum temperature of around 20 degrees and minimum of 14 degrees. Leh will see a maximum temperature of around 11 degrees Celsius and had minus 2 degrees as the minimum temperature in the morning. Gilgit may see rain or snow and Muzaffarabad is having generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Maharashtra continues to report highest daily COVID cases. Six states continue to report a surge in new cases. All schools from class 1 to 8 closed in Uttar Pradesh from 24th to 31st of March amidst rising corona cases. Schools and colleges in Chandigarh to remain closed till 31st of March. Supreme Court refuses to extend six-month loan moratorium period offered by the Reserve Bank of India, says complete waiver of interest during the moratorium could not be granted. Lok Sabha takes a finance bill 2021 for consideration and passage. Filing of nominations for fourth phase of assembly elections in West Bengal to end this evening. Election Commission team arrives in Siliguri to review the poll preparedness for the upcoming assembly elections in West Bengal. BJP releases manifesto for upcoming assembly elections in Assam. Promises to make the state free from floods. In Madhya Pradesh, 13 people including 12 women die in an auto and bus collision in Gwalior. Meeting of Permanent Indus Commission between India and Pakistan underway in New Delhi. Germany extends lockdown till 18th of April to break the third wave of COVID-19. And in cricket, in the first ODI against India, England wins the toss and elects to field. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the midday news.